This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh God, oh Father, we are grateful for the blessings of this day to purpose our lives together. Invoke your blessing upon it, this worship experience today. Bless each participant. Use us to your glory and to your honor. We ask you to meet every need, every desire, every expectation for your will and your purpose. Jesus we ask. Amen. Bless the Lord. We've come to bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me.
he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wound, poured on oil and wine, and set him on his own animal, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, um, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. So read it, the word of God. ever experienced God's promises? Has anybody ever experienced God's promises? Does anyone know him to be a way maker? A promise keeper? A light in the darkness? Does anybody know that? I realize we know, we may not know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But if that's not your experience, sometimes you need a little reminder. So if you're on site or if you're uh, watching via Facebook Live, can you just put something in the box or make some noise so that the people that are in that place right now, sometimes you're not even able to pray for yourself. But if they can see that there are others that have been there before, and they're just letting you know that he's a way maker, amen? He's a promise keeper, amen? He's light in the darkness. Amen? I know we all have been in a place where even though we may have been told who God is, we sometimes have to get a reminder. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you wonder, how did I get to this place? I don't know how to get out. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, working in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker. I worship you. I worship you. 
the words with you. I don't know who it is. It could be for me. And I'm not ashamed to say, Lord, I need you to work some things out in my life. And if you can just humbly and boldly, in front of the mass, behind the mass, just ask the Lord to be whatever it is that you need. So that way, you won't be disappointed if you don't hear the right words from someone else. If you can't find it in the word of God, we're witnesses and we're sharing with you. He is our way maker. He's our strong tower. He is our company keeper. He's our light in the darkness. So whatever it is that you're going through, trust and believe that God is right there. One more time, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Pharisees um, and the Sadducees, he wanted them to get the full essence of what it meant to be Maybelline. He wanted them to get the idea, not only in words, but in their hearts, so they could practice knowing really how to treat their neighbors. He used the illustration uh, in this teaching because there was a great division and I can go so far as to say a hatred between the uh, uh, Jews who call themselves pure blooded Jews, aside from the Samaritans, <clears throat> who were also Jews, but they intermarried with the uh, Samaritans. For those Bible scholars who are present today, those who are listening, it was, it was uh, the northern kingdom of Israel uh, who were taken captivity, cap taken captive 
by the Assyrians. And when the Assyrians took the northern kingdom, uh, Samaria was really the capital uh, of Israel. And, and when they were taken into captivity, the Assyrians placed uh, the northern kingdom, Israelites, into areas that were less populated so they could build up uh, the population in those areas. So they intermarried with the, uh, uh, with the Samaritans and with the Assyrians. Uh, should say, uh, yeah, Assyrians, and and when they came back out of captivity, uh, the uh, southern kingdom of Israel had been taken into captivity by the uh, Babylonians. Babylonians, uh, when they were freed from the Babylonian, they were led out of captivity, a person by the name of Zerubbabel. And when they came back to the homeland of Jerusalem, they were going to build the temple. It was, it was the Samaritans, and as much as they were uh, Jews, offered to assist. And, and, and then it was the southern kingdom Jews who said to the northern kingdom Jews, you, we do not need your help because you are not pure. You have, you have intermarriage, you have, you have mixed blood, so you are not really uh, pure enough to even assist in building uh, the temple for God. But God wanted to sort of break the barrier here in relationship to that old thinking and old tradition and um, uh, so uh, as they came back to the homeland uh, there was a settlement in um, uh, in Palestine uh, where that was divided into uh, three provinces that was the uh, uh, Judea on one side, uh, there was Galilee on the other side, and Samaria in the middle. And they, uh, uh, so when they wanted to go from Judea to Galilee, they would go all the way around to keep from going through Samaria because Samaria was considered unclean. God wanted to show uh, the those pure scholars that that there was nothing in the lives of his people that he couldn't clean, that he couldn't make pure himself. So he uh, uh, he said in this parable, uh, which we will discuss today in uh, the, the, the attitude and the gesture of the Good Samaritan. The trio here that uh, Jesus gave, uh, you would have thought in a the rational sense of the Southern Kingdom Jews that, that it would have been the priest, the Levi, uh, and the Jew. But Jesus switched the Jew for the Samaritan. So the trio here today that we are looking at would be the priest, the Levi, and the Samaritan. He forced, he forced a, a uh, paradigm shift in the mind of the a uh, lawyer who stood and asked the question because uh, uh, in their minds no Samaritan could do anything good. They couldn't do anything 
rationally. They couldn't do anything uh, of, of significance. So they had no dealing. So Jesus gave that illustration of the man who was uh, traveling from uh, Jericho to Jerusalem and fell among thieves and was uh, beat up, passed up. And today we are at the point of where he was picked up. With the, with the, um, with the attitude of the Samaritan, um, he placed compassion before anything else. He knew how the Jews felt about the Samaritans. He knew there was no good relationship. He knew that there was bitterness. He knew that there was anger. He knew that there was resentment. So, but instead of passing a man who needed help, compassion kicked in. I would say to us today, my sisters and brothers, um, we need to be careful how we treat people as we travel this land. You don't know whose hand you're going to fall in before leaving here. You, you, you don't know who would have to take care of you. You don't know who would have to pick you up. You don't know who would have to minister uh, 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 assistance uh, to you in a time of difficulty and time of trouble, time of sickness. You don't know. We have to be careful. You may have your thoughts about a person not qualifying to be in your class or in, uh, 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 in your standard, as you may say. But, but it doesn't matter about what class. It doesn't matter about that the, the, the status of the individual, he is or she is God's child. God is concerned about all of us. And he did not create us and place us in a position to look down on the rest of us. He didn't equip some with uh, uh, so much until they can uh, surpass and look over all around the rest of us. But this, this, this Samaritan, uh, he placed compassion before everything else. Before prejudice, although there were prejudice, before racism, before hatred, before opinion, before work, before time, before energy, and even before money. He knew that when he picked this man up, it was going to cost him something. And that we should realize that in this life, as we move through our daily responsibilities, when we offer assistance, it might cost us something. This good Samaritan saw a brother who had been robbed of his possessions, stripped of his clothing, beaten half to death. He saw a fellow human being in desperate need of help. He was knocked down at the hand of crooked men and now he need to be picked up by the hand of a good man the good samaritan went to the man reached out personally personally to him first he cleaned his wounds meaning that he had been uh beaten so bad they the they, they were they were there were his wounds were open and he poured in, cleaned his wound, and poured in oil and wine, and then bandaged them up. And so that it would sort of ease 
his pain. And then, and then, he picked the man up and put him on his own beast. Uh, uh, meaning that he sacrificed his own comfort. Many of us won't go out of the way because we don't want to be discomforted by uh, a situation that we did create that's none of our business. So we don't get involved in certain situations because it's going to bring us out of our seats of comfort. Many times if we're going to do the will of God, we have to, we have to be uh, in a position or have mindset that we are going to be, uh, uh, have to leave our comfort zone. This man, this man transported this man, this wounded man, the man that has been beaten, the man that was half dead. He, he, he transported him. The Bible said, when you read it, it says an inn. And, and um, uh, I, I don't know, but, but you won't find it in scripture, but it could have been the Holiday Inn. It could have been the Ramada Inn. Uh, uh, it could have been one of the other end, but but he brought him to an inn, and then he uh, uh, decided to take care of him himself until he got to a point where he could move on. Look at what he didn't do. He didn't put him in a nursing home. He didn't put him in assistant living. He didn't put him in the hands of, 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 of someone to take care of him. He took care of the man himself. And, and, and he provided for the man's basic necessities himself. He didn't ask for help. There's nowhere in scripture that he asked for assistance. He did everything himself. And, and like the good Samaritan, there are those who are, have been beaten, there are those who have been struggling, those who have uh, been uh, 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 passed up, and they need some assistance. And this message is not only to the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, but they are to the members who are listening today in, uh, and those who are present today because we need to put Christ first in all we do and all he has required of us to do to make a difference in the lives of those we have been called to serve. Peter and John ran into a situation. A man that was passed by every day. A man who was brought to the temple and laid at the temple gate every day. People would pass by him and, and they would go into the temple to worship they will go in to pray they would go in to do their temple duties nobody said anything to the man about would you like to go inside they they are passing by every day our sisters and brothers how many people do we pass by coming to church Come into this drive-in service. I, I have I have an extra seat in my car. You can ride and enjoy the service. We we, we pass them by because uh, they don't they don't fit in to our lifestyle. So uh, uh, we we keep on coming. We give the Lord what we feel is due Him, but we are not willing to share what we have to make it possible for others to enjoy what we are enjoying. And uh, so, so, so Peter and John 
the scripture says, came to the temple one day at the hour of prayer, which was three o'clock in the afternoon. And, and as they approached the temple, the man had a little cup that he used every day for those who are leaving and those who are entering the temple, asking for alms. Peter, Peter and John looked at the man as he begged for help. Peter said to John, do you have uh, any change? And John says, no. But Peter said, I, I, I don't either. But we can't leave the man here because he's asking for a sister. Let, let us let us give him uh, what we have. And 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 Peter said to the man, we, we, we don't we don't have what you're looking for. But I think we have something better. I I, I know we may not look like the people that normally go. Uh, in and out of the temple, but as much as 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 we 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 may not look the part, but we have something I know that you will be interested in. I know that you you would you you, you could use because we want to get you from where you are, out of your condition, into the temple. He said, "Look on us." We don't have silver, we don't have gold, but in the name of Jesus, and that's a great name. If you never used a name before, you ought to try it sometime. You don't have to go through a whole litany of situations. He already knows our needs. He knows our situations. All we have to do is say, Jesus, I need you right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of him who died on the cross, in the name of him who uh, uh, went into the grave and stayed three days and three nights, in the name of him who got up on Sunday morning, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Peter lifted the man up by the hand. The scripture says he went into the temple leaping and praising God. When Jesus picked us up, when Jesus worked things out for us that we know that nobody else could help and nobody else could do, no other power could do, we ought to give him praise. We ought to give him the glory. We also give him the honor because we know that he is worthy of all our praise. The man, the man, the man brought him to the inn and said to the innkeeper, It's time for me to depart. And I want to pay what the man owed. I'm going to pay. Uh, for a month and two weeks in advance his room and board. But if it costs more, if it costs more than what I'm paying now, when I come back, I will pay the bill. That's what Jesus saw in us. He saw, he saw, he saw us with a debt that we couldn't pay. He saw our condition. He saw our needs. He saw where we needed his assistance. And Jesus, Jesus did this for us. This man, this man demonstrated his love for his neighbor by putting his love into action. Love, love into action requires our time, requires our energy, requires our money. 
Love is not just an idea or a feeling towards God. Love is a practical act and commitment to help anyone who needs our help. Anybody can say, I love you, but what can you do for me? What are you going to do to help me out of my situation? We need, we needed, we needed help, as I said earlier. We were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. But yonder on Calvary, he paid our sin debt. He paid it all, and all to him we owe. Sin, sin, sin had left a crimson stain, and only the blood of Jesus uh, could help us in our situation. And when we think about what Jesus did on Calvary, the blood he shed it for our salvation, this song come to mind. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All oh, precious is the flow that make me white as snow. No other fault I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If there's someone listening today and want this blood, you can have it. The hymn writer says, there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel vein. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, loot all their guilty stain. The dying thief even rejoice to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. And dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power. To all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more. I know many of us uh, uh, take medication and, and uh, if you look on uh, the bottom of, of that uh, bottle of that uh, over-counter medication and sometimes uh, prescription medication you have an expiration date meaning uh, that you should not uh, use the medication beyond that day because uh, it involves uh, uh, some strength and uh, it probably wouldn't do that much good, but I want you to know uh, the blood of Jesus uh, uh, never lose uh, its power. The blood of Jesus uh, uh, never lose its strength. Uh, uh, the blood uh, that Jesus shed way back on Calvary, uh, it soothed my doubt, uh, it calmed my fears, uh, it dried uh, all of my tears. Uh, the blood uh, that gives me strength. Uh, from day to day, uh, we'll never, we'll never, uh, we'll never lose this power. Uh, great man, uh, his song says it reaches uh, to the highest mountain. Uh, it flows uh, to the highest valley. Uh, and I want you to know uh, the blood of uh, God's kingdom uh, give me strength from day to day. Uh, it will never, uh, it will never, uh, it will never.
could never lose his power. I'm glad today uh, covered by his blood. Nothing cleanses like his blood. I should never take shit no Christian discipleship. If that one here today, you had a privilege, an opportunity. Jesus can pick you up. He can, uh, he'd already paid the price for you. And all you have to do is accept what he's done for you. If you're here today, give your life to him. He's ready. If you are ready, been waiting on you. Come a letter. Christmas man, the kind of baptism. Today is your day.
travel and in your uh, shopping and around other people be wearing your mask. Uh, get used to it. They are sometimes uncomfortable, but but um, you can put up with a few hours of discomfort um, rather than being hospitalized uh, for a period of time with this uncurable disease. So I'm asking that you would uh, keep those um, concerns in mind. Also, I want to ask the brethren who are listening to me today that I would like for you to share in the praise of the worship. Um, uh, we have some great voices among our men and I don't want to keep wearing out uh, just a, a few that are here uh, because we have more. So don't leave it up to them, but uh, we, we need our the, the brotherhood and uh, some of the other sisterhood to step up for the responsibility. So next Sunday I'll be looking for the brethren uh, to be standing, uh, handling the praise singing. And um, uh, please do that, we're here together. And I want to thank you for coming out in all this heat. This will give you some idea of what it will be like after this life. Uh, Hell is much more discomfort. If you don't believe it, just read the scripture and it will give you example of those folk who can even get uh, a cool, not only cold, but can't even get a cool uh, spoon of water. So you don't want to go to hell. And uh, so this little heat is nothing in, compar in comparison what hell would be like after this life and I want you to know I appreciate you coming and I appreciate you being here and, um, uh, and I want you to call your other neighbors and your friends and let them know that we're here and, uh, uh, and they can join us uh, here on Sunday mornings. So thank you so very much. Let us prepare now uh, for our communion, your health, your cup in your hand. Uh, uh, Jesus on the night before uh, his was taken uh, from the guard captain uh, he had his last meal with his disciples he said to them with desire I have desired to do this before I suffer I will not drink of the cup nor drink of the fruit of the vine I will not uh, do this until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. I want you to know as we partake today and as we share in this Holy Communion service, don't take it lightly, don't take it for granted. Uh, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Uh, you want to be covered. You want to eliminate everything else out of your mind, out of your system at this time, but Him, only Jesus. So as we partake today, we ask God's blessing upon this bread and this wine. God bless you all uh, this period of communing together in remembrance of the sacrifice you made for us. We ask that you would bless this bread and this wine we use symbolic of your shed blood and of your broken, torn, and abused body. We ask that you would uh, speak to each mind individually, each heart, prepare them to commune totally, exceptionally with you as we do this together in this setting. Bless now in the name of Jesus we ask. Amen. The scripture says that Jesus took bread and he broke it. And then he gave thanks. Bless you, oh God, this bread we use symbolic of your broken body. Bless as much as you take for this purpose. In the name of Jesus we ask. Let us commune now with the bread. Jesus 
said, this cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. O oh God, bless now this wine with you, symbolic of your shed blood for the remission of our sins. Bless as much as it takes for this purpose. It is in the name of Jesus we ask. Let us commune now with the cup.